Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is giving you my top five Linux distributions of the year 2023. Now this is going to be a personal list as I am biased and I have uh, varying opinions of all these different Linux distributions. If this was an actual like top 10 best list, it would probably like start with Debian and then have a OpenSUSE and probably like Red Hat Linux in there somewhere. Distributions like that. This list is my personal favorite. Linux distributions that I've actually used on physical hardware in about the last year, and I do find myself coming back. Like last time, this isn't really gonna necessarily be ranked from my least to most favorite. Rather, it's gonna be ranked from the one I spent the least amount of time in to the one that I spend the most amount of time in. So when it comes to ranking, that is really going to be about it. So coming in number five, we're gonna have to talk about vanilla OS. Vanilla OS is what I would consider to be a Linux nerd's dream. It's based on Ubuntu, but strips out just about everything I don't like, including Snap and any other generic canonical trash. Vanilla OS is a mutable operating system. Core parts of the system are read only to prevent unwanted changes and corruption from third party apps due to something like a bad update. Vanilla uses AB root creating a present and future state for updates and most packages will be installed using flat packs, app images, and they're gonna be supporting snap packages soon, but they do have their very own package manager APX that allows you to install Fedora, Arch, Ubuntu, and a few other distributions distribution packages within containers or as they call in their GUI within various subsystems. Overall, it's a phenomenal distro, especially if you have a little bit of experience, you kind of know the differences between various package managers and you want to be able to play around with all of them in one system. Just how you can play around with numerous Linux distributions within our sponsor, Linode. Not only can you play around with a bunch of different Linux distros, but you can spin up a wide variety of services using their one-click installer. Linode is a great place to host things like Nextcloud, your website, really whatever, and if you use the link down below, you could get a $100 60-day credit to get started today. And from there, we're gonna go to number four, and that is KDE Neon. I have been using GNOME or GNOME as my desktop environment of choice for, I would probably say years at this point. That is until I installed KDE Neon to go ahead and test out some updates for a video. The updates were so good that I found myself booting into the drive I installed KDE Neon rather than my main operating system and actually using that system on a daily basis because of the desktop environment. KDE Neon is a Ubuntu LTS-based distribution shipped by the KDE team themselves, featuring the latest that they have to offer. KDE Neon is often the very first distribution to get KDE Plasma updates, and I'm particularly fond of their testing image, which allows just about everybody to get an early preview to see some of the work that they are doing. I personally love KDE Neon because there's not really any customization or modification beyond what the developers of the desktop environment want there to be, making this distribution probably one of the very best ways to experience KDE Plasma. Counting down to number three, we have SteamOS or a hollow ISO. Valve's investment in Linux and the popularity of the Steam Deck has probably been one of the very best things for the entire Linux ecosystem as of recent. SteamOS, at least the version intended for the Steam Deck, is an Arch-based Linux distro built around Steam Big Picture Mode, giving users a console experience while giving users access to the traditional desktop by switching over to desktop mode, popping you into a KDE Plasma environment. Hollow ISO is a rebuilt version of the Steam Deck recovery image, allowing you to install SteamOS on, or at least the modern version of SteamOS on other hardware. My first experience with Hollow ISO was installing it on a little mini PC, which I'm currently still using today as kind of my main living room console, which it's really just a uh, overpriced PS2. And my love for it overall has exploded since I was able to pick up this guy and actually use it on the hardware that it was intended for. Valve has made a wonderful experience here with the menus and how fluid the system is. Even integrations with some of the Linux tools such as Goverlay built into their performance overlay under battery settings. And honestly, when it comes just to implementing Linux into a consumer market, this is bar none one of the very best experiences out there. It's, it's truly amazing. Stepping away from the consumer level, we probably have the most boring distribution on this list and that is Ubuntu Server. I am no fan of the standard Ubuntu desktop, but their server edition has never done me wrong. Whenever I need to spin up a service in Proxmox, I generally pick Ubuntu server as goes for needing a server distro on hardware or even spinning up something on 
Linode. I'm just so used to using Ubuntu server, especially when it comes to interacting with the CLI and terminal environment, as I'm familiar with a lot of the packages that Ubuntu server ships and how to use them. Overall, it's just kind of a mixture of familiarity and efficiency. For me, when I use other systems, I find myself on forms or guides and just a lot more needing to figure things out. Performance is top notch, package availability is there. Overall, it's just a great system. Other than the Synology NAS I have, which is running Docker and doing backups, it basically powers everything within my home lab. And then that takes us to number one. And if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you will not be surprised that it is Nobara Linux. I started using this full time in the summer of last year, 2022, and it has been my primary go-to daily driver ever since. I was using the GNOME version for a while, but in the last few months, I actually switched over to their KDE version after I spent some of that time checking out KDE Neon. Nabora is basically Fedora, which is my favorite desktop operating system out there with a bunch of tweaks and modifications that really do make a difference in what I do. Latest Mesa drivers, fractional scaling packages, OBS studio improvements, and just a whole lot more. Nobara Linux fixes many of the issues that I had installing Linux on hardware, such as gaming laptops, that are generally or often difficult with a stock Fedora installation. Hell, they even have out-of-the-box support for DaVinci Resolve, which is often a pain to set up on AMD machines. At the moment, this operating system does everything I need it to do and I really have no intention on kind of switching away from it as I've had almost no bad experiences. And if you do want to learn a little bit more about this operating system, I have a separate video that I cover it uh, with more detail and talk more about my experience. But with that, I do need to bring up some honorable mentions that just did not make the cut this year. And the first is Pop! OS, which I did find it quite difficult not to put in this video, but I really haven't been using it as much as I'm more waiting and anticipating the release of their new Cosmic desktop environment, which is written in Rust. Most of their resources are going to it. They've even been kind of skipping updates as they've been building that. So overall, I'm super excited to check it out when those come out. But for now, Pop! OS just is kind of on the back burner for me. And the same goes with my other honorable mention, which is Endeavor OS. Before I got into kind of Fedora operating systems, I was heavily in Arch. And my Arch distro of choice was Endeavor OS. I didn't really switch away from it for any particular reason. Rather, I just want to try out Fedora and I ended up loving it so much that I've stuck with it. So if you're looking for a Arch-based Linux distribution that is easy to install, includes some tools out of the box to kind of help you out, and just has a wonderful community and forms and all that backing it, Endeavor OS is a wonderful option. And with all that, what are some of your top Linux distributions? What have you spent some time in? Please leave them down below. It's going to be interesting to kind of check out where people like to uh, do their work. And uh, with all that, big thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. Again, link down below for $100 credit. Thank you, especially for watching it. It wouldn't be possible without you. Uh, that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.